the main idea was I, I wanted to have you um, explaining to, from you how would you explain simply Harpy Media APIs to people and, and mostly what are the, the, the state of the industry, uh, industry, the state of the software on, on, on Harpy Media, you know, what are the, not politics because we're not at this, at the, uh, at this stage, but what are the, 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 the trends, so mainly. So if, I wanted to have your, your opinion on it and after I will, I, I will really ask to have a lot of interaction, so if you have any question, uh, you, you, jump, uh, you jump in. Um, so hypermedia in a couple of words. Uh, I would say that's basically trying to get rid of those of that external documentation that you currently need to use. So the, the basic idea is to put all the controls in the message itself, so that you don't have to read documentation. So that the client or the user can really, you know, just like on a website, click on links or firma, fill out forms to interact with a web API. And the second question was regarding the current state of the software or trends. So I think the biggest issue we currently have is not really like that we don't have formats. We have enough formats, I guess, but uh, I think the biggest issue at the moment is that we don't have any tooling around it or just very little tooling around it. So I think that's the thing that we need to work on next. It's uh, like all those formats, they have different strengths and you know different pros and cons, but in the end, uh, what's missing at the moment, I think it's tooling because developers simply need to get their job done and they don't really care in the end what's on the wire. They just you know need to get their application shipped and well, it should basically work uh, out of the box. Yeah. Someone another opinion on it? Uh, yeah, so I, I totally agree with uh, Marcus in the sense that it's, the idea of hypermedia is to put additional information in the message, information that lets you control what you're doing. One of the ways I uh, explain it is it's taking things out of source code and putting it into message. So there are things in the message now that I didn't have to write code for. I agree also with Marcus on the idea, uh, trend-wise, that uh, um, tooling is a big challenge. Uh, it's, it's really a drag. Um, when I was in the SOAP days, I had a SOAP button in almost every editor I had. I'd write some code, press a button, magic happened. So it's been, you know, 15 years, we don't have a hypermedia button yet. I think that stinks. Um, the other thing that I would say about uh, trends, though, is it's mostly on client side right now. Services pretty much understand how to create a, a representation using any of the formats we've talked about. Clients don't really understand how to take advantage of it very well. That was kind of brought out in what, what uh, Stephen was saying about let's build some general shared libraries. I think the biggest thing is um, we've been doing this notion of, of a sort of a hypermedia-ish client in gaming for decades. The original Windows system, right, was this notion that I no longer controlled the cursor, so I had to write all these event things, right? So I had to write code that allowed somebody to make their own choices. Games allow you to make your own choices. We don't allow, we don't write API clients or even APIs often that allow you to make your own choices. We tell you exactly what to do. So we have to learn to write clients differently. We have to write clients so that they allow people to make choices, whether that's a human or whether it's actually someone who writes a bot that makes the choices. And I think that's the big challenge. Uh, I, I kind of think that you know, on the trends thing, that the, the, the big uh, the game changers are GitHub with their hypermedia API uh, and payment systems with their hypermedia APIs. And, and uh, so beautifully designed ones like Balanced or horribly designed ones like PayPal. And uh, uh, if they're not, uh, are there a sponsor? Yeah, but uh, oh, sorry. we always ask, but you can have opinion and oh. opinions. This is why we invite you, right? Okay. So, uh, 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 and why GitHub? Because again, we're in the post DevOps uh, thing. Uh, but anyway, we're uh, uh, more and more coders uh, mechanize their own code, so interact with their own code base through code, and therefore are learning about the. And because many use GitHub, they're learning about the advantages of uh, having automatic binding on, 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 on stuff. And uh, because payment represents precisely the brokenness of most other forms of transactionality. So uh, because uh, hypermedia APIs allow for, again, long running uh, distributed transactions in a way that is sane, uh, I think people will get used 
to hypermedia as something that, that allows you to do that in a simpler way. But so you post, you get a link to something else that will represent the current state and then. So uh, I, th I think we will see more adoption, but I also think that kind of my, my talk there, that you will see more and more people uh, kind of trying to think how does this work with other serialization formats uh, that are not strictly typed, uh, like JSON that is uh, not a streaming format, that it's very hard to do types in, 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 in JSON. So we will see also more and more kind of discussion between the hyper media world and upgrades to other protocols using message pack, Avro, Thrift, uh, using stuff that is more closer to whatever a, a message queue would be. So Steve, your opinion? Nothing works ever. Okay, this isn't even a computer. It should be working. Um, so I, I like to describe hypermedia APIs. Uh, most APIs today are designed from a data-driven position. So what is the information, like what is the, what is the state of my API? Whereas a hypermedia API comes from a place of what can I do? It's an action-driven design as opposed to a data-driven design. And everything else kind of flows from that. So the rest of it's all just details. Um, at least when you're on a panel anyway. Uh, as, as far as like trends and such, uh, I am bummed I went last because everybody said the things I was going to say. I think we're all unified in, in understanding that we've been doing a lot of, we've been doing a lot of talking about the server side, which I like because I'm a server side person. Um, but uh, the client side is like the next area that we don't know as much about. Um, and that there's a lot of research and activity going on in how to write good clients and what that means and how do we do it and generic clients and such. So I think that that's really important. And I also agree that the tooling is absolutely important um, because you know we as programmers are lazy. I would much rather gem install foo clients than re-implement foo client every single time. So, but somebody has to write it in the first place. So tools. Super important. Do we have a website button? Uh, Heroku now has a deploy this, so you can actually include in your GitHub readme a link to this like Heroku image, and if you click on it, it will deploy a copy of that repository to your Heroku account automatically, which is kind of intense. So we have. So uh, yeah, a little bit, but. So, um, um, so a lot of people didn't know about a uh, uh, happy media. If I say, um, and because we have, you know a lot about it, some people don't know about it, but if I say, Documentation-less APIs. If I say version-less APIs or non-breakable client APIs or unbreakable APIs, does not make you sc scare? Uh, well, or, or you no? said you wanted this to be interactive, and that could I could like go on for an hour about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So interactive <laughs> APIs or yeah, browsable APIs or yeah. I definitely think that those are ways of characterizing things, but the problem is, is that those are like like all slogans. They're jargon that means something to the people who say it and not to the people who hear it. So. Uh, the versioning thing is especially interesting because uh, because URLs are u opaque, I don't care if there's a V1 in your URL. And uh, REST sort of, it sort of takes on this like immutable idea that when you want to add new semantics, you add them, you don't subtract them. So if I add new semantics at a new URL, I don't care if that URL happens to be the same URL as the old semantics with a two instead of a one after the V. Totally doesn't matter. But so from my perspective, it's a versionless API, but from someone else's perspective, it has a V in the URL, so it is versioned. And therefore, like, we talk past each other when we say hypermedia is not versioned. I, um, I was mainly uh, saying, that, saying that because, um, you know, we try to attract more industries to actually meet industries, meet APIs and, and each other. And maybe this, all the, what the, the things may not talk to them, you know? So for example, <laughs> But payments, uh, uh, balance payments was a payment company and they hired you. So why they hired uh, you, why did, why did they jump into hypermedia? They, they could have done like Stripe or others. Yeah. So in, I, I don't want to be, the, this isn't like a Steve only panel, so no, I'll no, shut no, up after this. Other but will. The point is, is that for in the balance use case, like payments needs to be reliable. It's none of this move fast and break things Facebook shenanigans where you can like break every API client and like everyone still loves you for some reason. Like if, if a payments API changes in a way that breaks, you can start counting like dollars per minute being lost literally as opposed to just the figurative business loss of like whatever your bottom line says. And so the, the, the CTO of Balance is very concerned with stability and the ability to change over time. And so when Fielding describes REST as design over decades and being able to like maintain systems that are stable over a long period of time, that is something that speaks to payments people very strongly. 
So, but for example, let's, uh, I will ask Mike, but so payments, at least you, you don't want to design for decades, you want to design for not breaking uh, mainly. It may say the same thing, but, uh, but for example, for embedded systems, systems that will be embedded in cars, things that will be really hard to reach. So now we need to design for years, maybe for decades. So how we can convince these people to, to know more about Happy, happy Media? Yeah, well, well I'm, not, I'm not sure about the convincing part because I've been at it a while and I don't know I'm so good at it, so. Um, can, I, can I not shut up for a second? It's, it's <laughs> there's, a, there's an old socialist slogan that goes, uh, Eugene Debs, uh, I would never lead you into the promised land because then someone else could lead you right out. <laughs> I think that's important. <laughs> that's good. So, so I might be leading people out, I don't know. Um, so I think, you know, when you talk, like, I think, Cars is a great example because the you know installation and lifetime of cars is decades. The creation and the build and all that. There's uh, there are also, also lots of other things that are like that. Um, so a lot of you know buildings and uh, appliances. There's all sorts of things that have lifetimes that go on for years and years and years. I think as we attempt to digitize them, to create interfaces for them, we're going to have to decide if we're going to create what are called disposable interfaces. Whereas, you know, I created that 10 years ago and there's like 30 great things that we could do, but not with that one, right? So, or we're gonna have to design interfaces that allow the new things to occur. And we can do that a couple of different ways, but I think that's one of the big challenges that we'll have. Hypermedia is one way to allow things to actually improve or adapt rather than just sort of die off on the vine. Uh, I would really, really, really like uh, for uh, airplanes not to implement hypermedia or HTTP at all. And uh, the reason is, and this is something uh, that uh, hasn't, the web works because it breaks well. And it's the only reason it works. And any uh, um, will to uh, uh, now repair the web like you want to repair the web so it will really work systematically always we'll have a schema for a person and we'll know all of this will break the web because it works because it breaks. If you take Mosaic 1, the first web browser, and you visit any current website, if it's not totally stupid, it will perfectly work. It will be usable. Anyway, the main usability of this website will be there. If you take the last nightly from Firefox and you visit the first website, it will work. And this is why uh, kind of the thing we want from hypermedia is this magic. But it means it still breaks. It's not the same design. It's not perfect. The JavaScript won't run, but it gives a service. So uh, uh, the breakability is, is, is the good thing. I don't want there to be perfect clients for perfect servers and everything works flawlessly. This is SOAP. And SOAP is broken. And SOAP is stupid. And so this was a soft or hardball, but, but, but it's, we know it is, uh, but it's complete. It has everything. It breaks and or it evolves? It breaks or it evolves? It doesn't break. The soap does not break. When you finished, seven, seven years later, when you finished your implementation, uh, it will work. But we don't want that. We want to implement it in, in four minutes, and we don't care. It sometimes breaks, even when sometimes it breaks payments. That's also okay, because everything breaks all the time. Uh, so this is true for everything but airplanes. Please do not put that <laughs> in airplanes. I do not wish them to break ever, anyway, when I'm on them. So um, I'm not trying to repair the web. I'm more like trying to, you know, getting rid of the human aspect, because till now we kind of had the luxury to always have like a very smart user in front or more or less smart user in front of a screen which really does all the hard work. And that works really great for websites. So you just, you know, you can change everything, the user will figure out hopefully how to operate it even if things move around, if they're quite, dif quite different workflows, whatever. For a machine that's extremely difficult and so it's actually the only thing I would like to do is to give a bit more of data to the machine so that it can recognize certain things. It doesn't have to be perfect, it can fail from time to time, but if you give a machine a bit more data, it can do more stuff, obviously. But I have a question. We will have device versions and API versions. This is where we're going if we don't go in Happy Media. So well, two versionings, hardware one, software one, 
and people one maybe? <laughs> well, obviously you have different device versions. I mean, that's uh, unavoidable, I guess. But if you if have, I have a, a Fitbit 2 but with API version 1 if versus you have, API If you have a concept of a person, that's not going to change that often, right? So ah! person, well, you know. You can always take that. You can always go down the philosophical route, but if you are pragmatic no, no, about it, the practical, the, the practical route is: please, what what are the allowed values in gender? Well, for like my grandfather has had two hips and one shoulder replaced, and I ask him when is he a cyborg? Like when is he stop being a person and start being a cyborg? Yeah, but the thing there's 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 Do you have uh, one question? Yeah. Uh, I have a question about a trend. Uh, on one side, we have serialization mostly in JSON, and on the opposite side, for performance purpose, we have binary serialization. Uh, how do you see this trend uh, between API media, where it's human browsable, and on the other side, binary? Uh, Serialization, like for example, protocol buffer from Google or from other vendor, and where it's not readable, but for performance purpose, at the end you use this thing, so you're quitting the classical API media browsing you have with human readable things. Well, in my personal opinion, that's mostly an implementation detail. It doesn't really matter what's on the wire. Uh, you may, like text files like JSON, they have the advantage that they are very easy to work with. You just fire up an editor and you, you can see what's going on on the wire. But as you see with HTTP, for example, they are now shifting to a binary format because that's more efficient. So it's, uh, you know, like always a trade off between usability for developers and simplicity for developers and performance, I guess. But in the end, for me personally, it doesn't really matter the difference. Yeah, so I would ask why we don't all write in assembler. It's, I mean, it's what every machine runs. Machine doesn't run the code I write, right? That's, that's, that's for humans. So there are lots of things. So people get, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of politics involved in this idea, but uh, the, it's all going to be ones and zeros or even worse, right? So whether or not I write it in human or it's JSON or whatever it is, is just an interim. So I think there's a lot in, in what Marcus says. I'm not so worried about what gets sent over the wire. I'm worried about what happens at either end. And of course, when it, it happens at either end, then I, if there's a human there, I want it in some form that I can read, right? So it might be JSON, but it might be binary between here and there. It doesn't really matter. That's me. The, the kind of the, the main, uh, I believe that the, the main uh, thing for binary formats like you know AVO and stuff like that uh, is mostly the compile time, uh, the fact that interfaces are compiled, and therefore when uh, something changes, you 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 get a type error, uh, and programmers like type except Ruby program, but uh, programmers like uh, type errors. It's a good thing, so uh, uh, because it's extremely hard to pass JSON and know what schema it might conform to, or oh, I don't know even if it's possible. Uh, so uh, uh, I think that there are other reasons for which people are going to move towards uh, 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 streaming and, and binary uh, formats, uh, uh, which will simply be good for certain use cases, but to uh, have the entry point of your API root slash the menu as a binary format, that would be just incredibly stupid. What you would want there would be to say, okay, here are the resources I can serve. These are the serialization formats I support. Uh, this is uh, how you make a connection, and this is uh, how you would reconnect if it, you lose it. So there is not kind of a either JSON or something else. You would probably in a year or so see many APIs implement uh, two or three different kinds of protocols with two or diff three different kinds of, of uh, 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 serialization. And sometimes you would be able probably just to have content type negotiation. We like content type negotiation, right? So you get the HTML page directly with a form for you. You will get the JSON uh, for you and you'll get the protobufs for me. So. Someone has an ending, uh, ending comment? Specifically about uh, Happy Media? Ending uh, Ending comment. You have it. I, I was just going to say, I hate JSON, but I hate binary formats more. Um, <laughs> that's, my, that's my cap off to that discussion. Uh, 
but uh, I'm still, I'm apparently really tired. Question, <laughs> Hypermedia what? Ending, ending comments. Ending comments. Oh, final comments. Yeah. Um, you, <laughs> I think that people like different things and we should embrace different things and uh, whether or not you, I don't, I'm not interested in uh, like moralizing that if you don't use Hypermedia, you're a terrible person and should like cry yourself to sleep or something. Um, there are a number of different ways to build computer systems and we are all figuring out. I think Hypermedia is pretty sweet and I hope that I can convince you too as well. But uh, if you don't want to, that's cool. That's fine. Uh, I, I think the last thing I would say is um, we have to start building systems, not software. You have to start building things that mimic larger systems rather than individual things. We talk about braking. Planes break air all the time. All the time. In the air. All the time. But there are people there and there are systems there that catch the brake. We don't write software like that. We write software that assumes nothing breaks. You know, in, in, in nature, in life, there are no versions. No versions. There's not a version. There's just something that lives and dies, and a bunch of them die faster than anyone else, and they, we just don't see them anymore. Those are most, mostly my APIs, but... So... <laughs> right. The copy, clone, right? So I think we need to think more about the way real life works, rather than trying to figure out how to create systems that are sort of magically not going to break. Yeah, uh, I kind of agree, and I think to make it a bit more like practical, I think if you're looking at web APIs, I think we should more trying to mimic what websites do because they have been working quite well for the last I don't know 30 years, and somehow we kind of it seems as we forgot everything we did there for 30 years as soon as we started building web APIs. So we completely forgot that we have links, that we have URLs, all those very fundamental basic concepts that made the, ver the web what it is in the first place. So it's really a graph of data of documents. And basically, we can do the same with web APIs. And the other thing is uh, that I think we should, and that goes back a bit to my talk and our discussion, and we should really focus more on like, the messages that are exchanged and more on the data itself than really the, the, the code that you know, runs that. Or it's really the smartness should be in the message, in the data, and not in the code, in my opinion. Um, I second that. <laughs> I think what you should mostly think about when designing system is about the usefulness of the least compliant client. So the, the, the client with the least amount of code that understands your higher level concept the least. Uh, so if you take uh, HTTP2, uh, a telnet client will be useless, while uh, 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 you could use an, an HTTP API with just five characters as overhead on TCP IP. G, E, T, space, slash, by. And I will get the root, and in the telnet session, I will see what is the next step I can, and I can implement everything with the least uh, powerful client. And if you, everything you're writing is to, for the most compliant client, you will have two problems, adoption, and you're breaking the web. You're breaking the web because it means that everybody needs to be a good citizen Everybody needs to implement all RFCs correctly uh, uh, for anything to work. And that's kind of the, 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 the lesson we've learned is the contrary, that uh, uh, shitty broken systems working together with common concepts of degradability make for system programming, make for the world to be Erlang. Yeah. Thank you very much for this panel. It was just too short, but thank you. Thank you.